Francois and then David and then come to AP. Good morning, Excellency. My name is uh, Jean-Francois Dupacier from Africa Arabia. If you watch at the French-speaking press in recent days, you see a lot of articles in favor of Rwanda. Anyhow, there is often an incidental headline that asks the question, but who is Kagame really? The propaganda of your enemies, particularly in Congo, describes you as a cruel and bloodthirsty tyrant. Do you try to change this image? For example, in most of your official photographs, you look severe and distant. This can contribute to fueling controversy. Why don't you wear a slight smile like all your fellow presidents <laughs> around the world? Do you ultimately like or dislike being fed, sometimes hated, in the Western world? Thank you. Good. <laughs> uh, I think you have summarized well <laughs> the questions that have been there but not asked directly. <laughs> uh, but uh, for the smile, I think I have to borrow either some talent or actually directly the, the smile from some people. But the fact that it is, uh, the smile is lacking on me is not my making. Uh, uh, Maybe it happens accidentally. But, uh, but very interesting way of putting uh, the, your question. Uh, uh, I try to answer it this way. Uh, starting with uh, who, who is uh, me, who is the person. I, I have... Uh, me is the person you see. I'm not hiding anything. What you see in me is what I am. If you are just going by the looks or by whatever, or what, what I do more, I think, is what may describe me than my physical looks. Uh, so, I wanted to say, what you see is what you get with me. Uh, in, in most cases, in words or in deeds, they relate. My deeds and my words tend to relate. My looks may be different from that, may be different from my deeds and, uh, and how I think. Uh, but in any case, isn't um, the description of uh, the looks uh, also subjective? There are people who see me as a, uh, through the looks as a terrible person. There might be others who say, after all, there's nothing bad looking like that. So it's, it's subjective. But um, to the point you're making about tyrant or cruel or... You see, you, you, you can't be bad to that extent. Uh, cruel or a tyrant or bloodthirsty or whatever. And they hide it. It's difficult. Even if you try to hide it, there is a moment it betrays you. And that also, once it has come out or once it is not there, you register 
the feeling, the description the, from people who have to deal with you. If, if I was, some of the things uh, people have said about me or described me as, I mean, the judgment is out there, either for the people of this country or other people somewhere else. And it wouldn't just be confined to the press, because the press is full of individuals. But these individuals don't add up to a population that is as big as Rwanda's, even if Rwanda is very small. These are just individuals. Five in France, 10 in America, three in China, uh, two in Belgium, and so on and so forth. If you add all of them up, and they are even all negative and saying things about me, surely, these can't be the people that are right and the rest wrong. But they, 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 are, they only take advantage of the platform they have, of the, they are able to command uh, some uh, voice that uh, they put out there for people to, even people who don't know what you're talking. There are many people who even don't know about Kagame and get to know him by what a journalist has said, or the one in the press has said. And uh, in many cases in my experience, some of them have started by hearing what the journalist said and they ended up saying, but we've been told lies when they come to know this through other means, either by direct contact or visit or whatever, and interaction with other people who know this person that has been talked about. They may say, this, this person told us lies. And consistently, over many years, has been telling us lies. What we saw, what we heard, whether it is this city, whether it is the person, whether it is this. They say, no, but what we are being told is completely different from what we have seen or experienced. So, and of course, there is a particularity with the Western press. The Western press, but you, 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 I mean, you find out there are things that were said about this country 30 years ago, 25 years ago, that are being repeated now, which means, according to them, nothing has changed. They talk about uh, Rwanda, very poor population. We are poor. We are not where the developed countries are, for sure. But this poverty, the way it was in 1995, in 2000, is not the way it is in 2024. But somebody will keep writing in the press, like what we have today, is the same thing as we had 25 years ago. And keep just rubbing it in. You know, even the Kagame and his looks and so on, I, I've been trying, in recent days I've been trying with a smile. Maybe it's not a good smile, but I've been trying. <laughs> so the, the Kagame you saw in 95, in 94, 2000, I, I, anyway, there was no smile. There was nothing to smile about, so I didn't smile. <laughs> but now, with some progress, I can afford some smile once in a while. So 
If somebody thinks, uh, uh, you know, uh, like that, you know, I have even grown uh, gray hair. Last time I had black, my hair was black, and now it is gray. It is actually disappearing. I, I may be bald, but so if, if, if you think the Kagame you saw 20 years ago is the same now, <laughs> no, it, it is a misrepresentation. But even then, that time, I looked different, and uh, the press may not have uh, liked the way I look uh, like. But the situation that time maybe looked like that itself. <laughs> so I can't be in a heap of dirt and then I'm smiling. I mean, th th that's a lie. I would be a liar, I would be pretending, I would actually be. Um, having some problems with me to, to pretend that everything is okay around me when everything is bad. So, finally, the Kagame you see or there or you like or you don't like is going to be there anyway. <laughs> I don't need anybody to like me or to hate me to live my life. I live my life whether you like me <laughs> or you don't like me. And I have my views, I express them, I do things, I do. Uh, so I owe my living to not a single individual or country, even if powerful ones. No, we all. Human beings created, sometimes they say, by God, I don't know, maybe. Maybe some, we are there for something. But so for somebody to have powers over me, uh, that one I can tell you is not possible. Yeah, even the most powerful don't, didn't create me. Who created them, first of all? And we are all here just temporarily. We, 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 if we are lucky, we live up to 100 years. Those are the luckiest. You know? So the one who is saying all that has also his time, and he, he will go, like all of us. Everyone has their day. Uh, so that's why I can't accept that anyone has uh, powers over somebody else to the point of dictating. Uh, uh, even the most powerful don't have power over us, uh, how we live, how we do. So, but the Kagame has been shaped by that philosophy, that understanding, that what well, I try like any human being and do my best, do what I can do, do what I have to do. I may have flaws, make mistakes, own up, and do good things, benefit and benefit others. And so I'm that person. Tell, tell those people that actually to know me is not complicated. It's straightforward. It's me. <laughs> Then other things we can discuss on the side. <laughs> but that was a very powerful question. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Uh, we can take from Amu, who's just next to Francois. And then... Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency Amu Kanampili from AFP. Uh, my question is about the March 23 movement in Eastern DRC. Uh, your government has previously denied backing the movement. Does that denial still stand um, a year and a half later? And what is the current relationship between Rwanda's government and the M23? Thank you. Well, those who accuse us, I would ask them, 
why they actually don't support M23 themselves, uh, including AFP you, 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 as a journalist? Why, why don't you support M23? Or why is the question, you support M23 or you don't support M23? First of all, what is M23? M23 is an organization born in and out of Congo. That's number one. Number two, these are Congolese. And you will hear even uh, uh, Congo admit it. Now, why do they exist? Why, why are they fighting? Why do they have arms? Is another question. It is also a simple question. They exist because they have been denied their rights as citizens of that country. They are called Tutsis of Rwanda. Fine. But then you need to be educated also a little bit about history. We have Rwandan communities in the Congo who are Congolese. And by the way, these are not just two things. It is the same social structure of, of our country that is also there in the Congo. Like, in fact, we have other neighboring countries where they are but they are citizens of those countries. We have 100,000 people originating from this community, 100,000 who are, have been living here in Rwanda in refugee camps for the last two decades. Why? Because they are being uprooted from their ancestral homes, persecuted, and sent across. In fact, there are more in Uganda. There are 300, there's 100,000 here, there are hundreds of thousands there in, in Uganda, more numbers. So M23 is born out of that situation. Uh, that's why I asked the, the question, I said, well, why, why would anybody else why would we, why, why are we being accused as Rwanda of supporting M23? And I'm saying even those who accuse us, actually I should accuse them of not supporting M23 because it is as if they agree with the injustice that is being done to this community. Otherwise, if, if you didn't agree with that injustice, you would be actually raising questions. Why, why are these people of M23 being treated like this? Why are we having 100,000 refugees here in Rwanda? That's where you would start from. Not start from asking Rwanda, are you supporting M23 or not? Are you still denying it? Because you are asking the wrong question. The issue is not whether anybody supports M23 or not. The issue is, what is actually the problem of M23? That is the question you should have asked, in fact. What is the problem? What is this thing called M23? Are they human beings? Are they this? Are they Rwandans? Are they Congolese? Are they that? Why? Why do they exist? Why do they even have arms and are fighting uh, in their own country? This is, this is the right question that I should be asked. So whether I, Rwanda supports or associated in any way is actually immaterial. It is relevant to the question. Or, or even you, if you want to educate yourself or educate the public, the question should have been simple. Ask me, by the way, what do you understand the M23 to be? What is it? That's a fair question. That's the one I would wish to be associated with rather than whether I support or not support. So we may take the last question, David. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. 
Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, Dupaké talked about uh, the image. I've been traveling through the continent, and uh, the majority of the youth, uh, I think, don't want you to remain the way you are. Uh, because Rwanda means for them hope. But more than that, a new school of political thought, a new school of uh, doing things, a new school of uh, making politics and transforming our society for the best for peace, stability, and economic prog progress. For the past 30 years, you have succeeded to build a modern state offering to Rwandese people a safe, space, a safe space to build their own lives and achieve their personal dreams. How do you see Rwanda for the 30 others coming years? Well, we, we, we keep making progress and uh, be where others are that uh, they have even taken for granted. And when you see developed countries, why, why can't uh, Rwanda or Africa develop to that extent or beyond? What is lacking? So, but what you have to deal with is the right politics in the place management of society and enabling society to do what they need or have to do to take them to a much higher level uh, in terms of development than where they are. So really that is the aspiration for all of us, even as leaders and I'm sure individual Rwandans, everyone wants to see development, they want to see um, us, uh, because we, we, we are human beings, human beings, uh, we can't have this kind, allow this disparity, and some have been designated to remain backward, poor, da, 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 and developed, and yet we are sitting on uh, immense resources that, uh, Actually, other people who are developed are coming to help themselves with and taking away. The, and for us, we are there watching and not doing anything about it. So the Rwanda of the next 30 years should be maybe three, four, five times uh, better uh, than what you see now. 30 years from... Uh, from our graves to being here, I think another 30 years. We are not coming from the graves. This time we are coming from uh, uh, some level of uh, progress that we have made. Thank you, sir. We may conclude here. Right. We'd like to thank you for your time with us and wish you a good day. Unfortunately, I couldn't take all the questions, but uh, I'm happy to meet you another time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day.